Hello guys and welcome to my review of the K6000 dashcam purchased from Banggood for £20 and at first look it looks a very stylish dashcam it's made of plastic feels quite light and it does feel quite cheap it does have a um, HDMI output on there it has a USB port and it has the little mount where you mount the suction pad. Around the edge you have your micro SD card slot and you have your power button on there. You have a reset switch at the bottom of the camera and at the side it's absolutely clear. So on the front you have your, your lens, your camera and two flashlights above there and your speaker on the front as well. And on the back you have your LCD screen and you have your buttons, your function buttons, which I'll show you in a moment. So it looks really stylish. I wouldn't mind having this in my car. Let's show you what came with the box. One thing I was very, very impressed with is the fact that they also provide you with an H HDMI cable, a mini HDMI to normal HDMI. Very, very impressed with that. That's so you can plug that into your um, camera and plug it straight into your television, have a live feed. But that was very handy. You get your charging cable. So yeah, this is the mount, the suction pad, which uh, screws straight underneath the camera, the in-car charger. You would definitely need that because the battery life on this, unfortunately, is poor. You get 20 minutes out of it, I'd say, on battery and then the battery dies. But I suppose that's why the in-car charger is there and that's why it's an in-car camera. You also get an instruction manual, but I haven't even looked at that. But the controls are pretty, pretty easy and are very, very similar to the GT300, which I've recently reviewed. So yeah, battery life is, is not very good. You get 20 minutes. So let's turn it on. You get a nice little tunes playing there. Okay, so it's on. There's no card in there at the moment. I'll just pop this four gigabyte card in there. It's a little spring. It clicks, so the card is in there now. Now I can show you how to record. So you're in video mode, and all you do is press OK, and it's recording. To press stop, you press OK, done. Press mode, into picture mode, press OK. Takes a picture, simple. Go into mode again, and then it takes you to playback mode. Go back to video mode. This button here with the little image there, that's your menu. Press that once. To navigate through the menu, you have your up arrow and down arrow. Press down to access movie size. Press OK, and you have an array of resolutions, 1080p down to QVGA. So the lower quality you go, the more video you can record on your SD card. Press menu to go back. You can set recording intervals. It's set to three minutes. So record three minutes and then it'll stop and start again. It's got move detect or motion detect, which you have on and off. Nor effect. What's that? Oh, okay, you can have a black and white effect, CPU or negative. Don't know why you'd need that on one of these. You can set the date stamp, date and time for your videos. And then you're back to movie and size. If you notice the, um, the spanner, if you press menu again, it switches over to there. And you can set sounds, shutter sound on, start up, beep on, volume. Auto review, so you can review your videos or pictures, power frequency, just leave that as normal, you can have power saver as well, which is off at the moment, date and time, yeah that's all set, that's pretty, pretty standard, language setting, TV out, NTSC and PAL, screen saver, that's on, so three minutes into recording it will 
the screen will go off. But let's keep recording. You can also change your startup image if you wish. Uh, format to format your SD card. Reset all, so reset all the uh, the camera to default settings, and then your version information there. And that's it for the settings on the um, on video mode. You can just change to image mode. There we go, and then settings. Then you can change your resolution for your pictures. There's quite a few there. Change the quality to fine, super fine, or normal. There's quite a few settings in here, and it's quite configurable. 50 meters sharpness as well, white balance, exposure, driver mode, effects. Yep, same again like the video. Scene mode, date stamp. You have anti shake as well and um, your ISO, your um, image sensor. So that's pretty much it for the pictures as well, the picture settings. And then if you go into the menu again and go to the spanner, it's pretty much exactly the same that I showed you on the, the video settings. Yeah, all the same. Very, very easy to operate. A little recording there. And the bottom right hand button there is the lock button. So it won't overwrite uh, the videos you're recording. So if you press that, you see a little lock key appear at the top. That will protect your videos from being overwritten. Okay, so that's pretty much all the settings you really need to worry about and the, the button configuration. So if we come to the front of the camera again and look at those lights there, a little flashlight, which is pretty cool. And you turn that on and off just by pressing the power button very slightly. I'm not sure how you'd use that in your car at night really because it may be a bit of a distraction for uh, other drivers. Okay so that's the camera functionality. So here's the the mount, the suction mount. That screws straight into there. Spin it around and then you tighten it by bringing that down. And then this, you twist that and you've got good maneuverability there. Mount it straight onto your windscreen like that and tighten it. And it's very sturdy as well. Very sturdy. It hasn't fallen off my windscreen. Um, it's quite sturdy when it's up there. That's how you mount that there. And then you place your charging cable in the top. Like that. And then route your cable round to where your cigarette lighter goes and then you're off and ready to go. And then if you want a live view from your camera on your computer, you just plug this HDMI cable in, straight into there, and straight into a computer, so have a live feed. Okay, I'm going to leave you now with a few clips of the dash camera in action. I've done some in 1080p, 720p, VGA and QVGA, just so you can get an idea of what the camera has to offer on quality and resolution. And it's not bad overall, it's not bad at all. 20 quid, you can't go wrong. And if you'd like to purchase one, there's a link in my description. Uh, that'd be fantastic. If this video has helped you and you've liked it, please like my video, subscribe to my channel, make my channel grow, and I'll bring you some more videos in the future. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.